Hi guys! Today's video is different from what you can usually see on my channel and that's because this year I spent quite a lot of time in Qatar where it's recommended to follow quite a strict dress code so you're supposed to cover your shoulders and your knees and as a matter of fact I don't have many outfits that match this criteria so I decided to create a couple of dresses, a couple of maxi dresses for myself so I went to that store with materials picked the best one, in my humble opinion, and when I was about to pay for it, the owner of the shop, the real Indian guy, came to me and said, do you know that this is not just a regular material, but it's a sari? And he decided to teach me how to put it on. That was hilarious, because the guy was wearing jeans, a shirt, and he just took my piece of sari and started draping it around himself. Can you imagine a man wearing a sari? That was hilarious. But I remembered the technique, and the first thing I did when I got back home, I tried it on. And what do you think? I loved it so much that I gave up the idea of creating some other dress from this material and I decided to wear it as a sari. And as I was super excited about learning this technique, I decided to share it with you guys. I'm not a professional by no means, but I would still like to share it with you because I think it's a, it's a curious information, even if you won't wear it. But then of course it would be a great option to wear somewhere by the sea or in a more exotic destination. Feel free to also check out one of my previous videos on 8 different ways to tie a scarf into summer dresses. Sari is usually worn with a tight fit and blouse, which shows your belly, and with an underskirt, tied tightly at the waist by a drawstring. Usually it goes under your belly button and looks very sexy. In Qatar I cannot afford this kind of a look, so I really need to cover my entire belly. I don't have an authentic petticoat neither, so I simply replaced it with a pair of shorts and a belt. It's important to find something that sits really tightly around your waist or around your hips, since the entire dress will rely on it, and you definitely don't want it to fall apart. The guy who taught me this specific way of draping a sari told me to start with a knot on one end of sari and then tuck in it under the skirt or under the belt, whatever you're wearing. This knot creates a kind of an anchor, but if you want you could of course additionally secure the tissue with a safety pin. Now you want to wrap the tissue around yourself once, with the tissue now coming back in the front. And now comes my favorite part, we're going to create multiple pleats. The width of each pleat should be around 5 inches, that's perhaps 13 centimeters, and the number of pleats depends on multiple factors. So it depends on the length of the material that you use, uh, your size, the final width of the pleats you'll be creating, and um, you'll know the right number of the pleats in the following step. Later you'll see why. Usually I have 12 to 15 pleats. Here you have to make sure that they fall straight and evenly. A safety pin may be used to stop the pleats from scattering. Now you can tuck your pleats into your underskirt, or I'm going to use my belt for this purpose, and start enjoying your beautiful draping. You can tuck them in such a manner that they open to your left or to your right. You can try both versions and see which one you prefer. Drape the remaining fabric around yourself once more and bring it around your hips to the front. Now you can bring the remaining tissue over your shoulder and at this point the end should fall to about the level of your knees. If it falls lower down, it means that you need to create more pleats in the previous step. And if the end is too short, it means that you need to release a couple of pleats in the previous step. And there you have it! If you'd like to prevent the end portion from slipping off your shoulder, you can fasten it at the shoulder to the blouse with a small safety pin. Honestly, a tank top is not the ideal blouse for this purpose. But for me it doesn't really matter, because in Qatar I have to cover both shoulders, and that's why I bring the end of the tissue over the second shoulder as well. Just like this. This way I totally conform to local dress code. But soon I'll be going on vacation, and there I plan to wear it slightly differently. I plan to wrap the end of the tissue around my waist to create a kind of a belt. Let me know in the comments what you think about this kind of a stitchless dress, and which way of draping it do you prefer? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I thank you very much for watching, and I see you in my next video. Bye!